Hi, my name is Josh Godfrey. Welcome to today's weekly lesson. Uh, today we're actually going to look at a, a piece, a piece entitled Corral Without Time that I wrote several years ago is in, and is included in my uh, uh, Formal Etude Collection 4.4. Um, but we're not going to specifically look at the piece in terms of, of how to perform that, but, but on a broader scale, how to perform chorales and how to approach a marimba chorale or a, a piece that relies primarily on sustained roles for marimba. Um, and there's just a couple of concepts that I wanted to bring out, um, and I'll just use this piece as a vehicle uh, for this discussion, and hopefully um, it can apply to, to any piece you play of this nature, um, including, including my piece, Corral Without Time. Uh, the first thing uh, that we need to consider whenever we're playing a corral, of course, is, is getting an ideal sustained sound. Um, and there's a couple, a couple elements that have to be considered there. Uh, first of all is, is simply the playing spot on the instrument. Um, it's really hard to play a sustained, smooth, beautiful sounding role if you're playing a couple of the mallets on the nodes. So if I'm playing with every bit of technique that I can, but I put my right hand right on the nodes, I'm not going to get a good sound. You can hear the, the lack of resonance, the lack of warmth, the lack of, lack of depth um, in those strokes. So, so of course, um, it requires that we find the best playing spot on the marimba, and sometimes that's quite challenging, uh, especially as you're dealing with you know one hand playing accidentals and natural notes. Um, but it, it, it certainly is possible in something that should be a point of focus. Um, uh, the second part of getting that good sound is making sure that we get the right kind of stroke. Um, it's very easy to play um, steady hand to hand, um, but not get a smooth rolling sound because we're not generating the lift off the bar that draws the sound out, as opposed, we're kind of, as opposed to that we're kind of driving the sound in. So just listen to this first chord um, in terms of uh, the two different ways I can get sound. Same mallet position, same mallet height, but how much of the weight of the mallet is being allowed to play into the bar versus how much I'm drawing the sound out. Um, so here's the chord. articulation and the rhythm involved in that role as opposed to the sustain of the role. Again, the wrong way. And should be the height, stick height should be very, very similar, if not the same. Um, but the biggest difference is the amount of lift. And so as you approach the instrument to play chorale, don't worry about the notes on the page. Don't worry about the rhythms on the page. First, find a way to get a great sound on your roll. Because if you don't get a great sound on your roll, the notes and rhythms are really irrelevant because it's not going to sound very good. Okay, so. Um, so in addition to picking the right spot on the bar, in addition to playing with the right kind of stroke to get that lift um, and resonance out of the bar, the other thing we have to consider is the roll is not a rhythm. And so playing with the same pulse all the time on a marimba corral is going to sound rigid um, and, and almost as if a, a computer is playing it. It doesn't have the, the nuance and the the uh, shaping that it should is terms in terms of roll speed um, and roll speed um, just like vibrato on a wing, wind or string instrument can really create a little bit of um, textural variation to our corral so you'll you notice probably when I played this open pa opening passage um, <laughs> I slowed down 
that roll speed and opened up the sound a little bit. That had been at the peak of a crescendo. And I felt like that slower roll speed gave the, the instrument a chance to really resonate fully and less, um, less draw attention to the actual consistent impacts of my mallet on the bar. Um, so to me, that really opened up that passage. And so as you're playing a corral, you want to think about, well, where should I push the roll speed a little faster or where should I slow down the roll speed a little bit uh, to give the sound a little bit of life and the texture a little bit of variation using that, you know, essentially uh, natural rubato that we are, excuse me, uh, 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 vibrato that we have to create um, because we have to keep striking the instrument again. So there's going to be a vibrato of volume, not of pitch, but of, of volume, um, and, but we get to control the speed of that, and that can inf uh, uh, inflect the piece with a little bit more life. Okay, so once we get a good roll, we think about our mallet positions, start messing around with roll speed to create some textural variation in our piece. Um, we also have to consider, okay, we need to play the right notes at the right time with the right rhythm. Um, and one thing that's been advocated many times that I've, I've used certainly with my students in my own performance um, is the idea of block, block chords um, before integrating the roll. Um, so being able to just work through the notes and move the mallets to the right position um, independent of, of uh, the roll can be a good way to get your hands used to the muscle memory of, of moving from chord to chord so that when you put the roll in place, it's a lot more likely to be very, very smooth um, and comfortable. So, for example, the first thing I would do is just start by playing each chord when it changes. And as soon as I play the chord, I'm going to move my mallets to the next position. So we're looking at this. One, two, three. time I'm thinking, okay, strike this note, and then where am I going to go next? Because if you have to figure out where you go next right before you go there, you're going to be late, and there's going to be sloppiness in your playing that you don't want to experience. And so it's very important to predict the next chord rather than react to the next chord. Okay, so as soon as I'm really, really good at that, and I would do this phrase by phrase, um, working through the piece. Obviously, we're just working the first phrase of this piece over and over and over today. Um, but take one phrase at a time and just block the chord. Once you get that, then you maybe consider putting uh, a rhythm to that blocking um, just to get the hands moving a little faster. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do eighth notes. One. of the fact that the hands are going to strike the bars over and over again, but we're still specifically practicing the movement both of the body and the mallets and the arms to accommodate the new position for each chord. Um, so just taking each phrase and blocking out those chords, not worrying about the quality of a roll. Certainly you want to continue and, and hopefully you can see a nice full relaxed stroke that's coming out of the mallets. Um, even though I'm not playing a role, I'm thinking still about the quality of sound and where I'm placing my mallets on the bar and what's going to be the best full sound so that when I do roll, my hands move to the exact same place that they've been moving in the process. So again, a couple things. It, this applies to any corral you might work on, um, but specifically we want to make sure that we're getting the best sound of the instrument, both by placing our mallets correctly, using the proper lift, and using a, a nice uh, varied roll speed as appropriate to to shape the texture of the of the sustain. And then uh, as far as learning the notes, work on blocking the chords first before you go ahead and play them with the rolls. So you can really work on your hand position, your arm position, your body position to get the right place, know the timing of the switches. Because the last thing we want to do is play a roll that just hangs on every note because we're trying to figure out what note we're supposed to play next, what chord we're supposed to move to next. Um, that just makes it an unpleasant uh, slow and long process. A corral is not necessarily 
slow in terms of lethargic and, and it doesn't move along. It just has a slow general tempo, but each chord should move smoothly to the next one uh, with anticipation um, so that our audience looks forward to what comes next as opposed to waiting for us to figure it out before we move there. So hopefully those help um, and best wishes in your own uh, performance of Marimba Corrales.